What's up? Welcome back everyone. So as you guys already know, it's no secret. Uh, something broke in the trans. I'm like 98% sure. 99% sure. It's second gear. I mean, we saw it. We already saw the main shaft. The only 1% could be if something else chipped while the teeth were rolling around in there. So I already took the transmission out this morning. You guys don't need to see that. I'll leave a link uh, if you guys aren't sure on how to drop a trans on an RSX, uh, I'll leave a link somewhere for you guys to watch it. But I already did all that. It took me about an hour and a half to drop it. We have the trans uh, right there. So the trans is already out. I'm going to put you guys up in a corner. I'm just going to time lapse it, split the, tra uh, split the case open, and uh, we're both going to see for the first time exactly what's broken. So we got the case open and uh, clearly there you go second gear which is this guy right here there's no teeth left uh, broke some of the teeth right here on the counter shaft all the teeth were right there caught on the magnet so uh, yeah you could just see more shavings everywhere else so the damage is pretty much the same damage that happened, uh, I think it was last year. Uh, it just shredded second on the main, well it shredded the main shaft, we'll just say, the main shaft is useless. Uh, shredded teeth off of the second gear on the counter shaft. Uh, there's teeth everywhere in the case. The um, counter shaft bearing is damaged slightly. You can see the little nicks around, you know, that's that's damaged. This, that's all the, the teeth are there. Um, there's nothing else really wrong with any of the other gears. Like I was checking first. Check the final drive. It actually took a little beating right here. Um, so we're, we're gonna need some more stuff. Like what, in this instance, what do we do? I have the perfect solution on what we do because I've been putting this off for so long. We install a 4.7 final drive. So I have a bearing. That's gonna replace the one that's chewed up. We have a new counter shaft that the teeth don't have any damage on them. We have a new ring gear. We have new diff bolts. So we're going to drop this ring gear. We have everything we need here to fix this. Um, again, I bought a used main shaft. So now it's as good as time as any to replace the final drive to finally go to the four seven. I, Everybody would always, you know, get on me like I'm all mortar car. Why am I still running a 4.3? I should be running the 4.7. That's probably my 11 second pass right there with just a final drive swap. So I'm finally, I have to do it at this point. Um, I bought a Synchrotech hardened second gear. So it's rated for 500 horsepower. It might be able to get us by for now. Um, I plan on doing something else with a main shaft down in the future right now i didn't want to have the car down for so long so i might do like a, a cryo treated main shaft just to try to harden the gears a little more before i purchase like a gear x one to four uh helical gear set you know just before i really spent some big bucks on that this is just to get the car moving for now so 
What's so? Uh, just to reiterate, I'm trying. To, I'm like, I'm talking out loud. Uh, four seven final draft. We're gonna be installing that. We have a new second gear coming. It's not here, so I can't really assemble it yet. But that's all right because we have to press the gears off of the counter shaft. So right now I need to find somewhere I can go to borrow a press so I can press this out. So it might not be done and well, you know what? I'm not even gonna upload this video until all this is done. So this is gonna be consecutive days until I can go somewhere, use the press, press it out. And I'm bringing the camera. I'm gonna show you guys. Press that out, uh, swap the ring gear on the final drive. The transmission case, so this and uh, the other half. This is going to quick strip. I'm gonna let him powder coat it so that way it looks fresh. I'm gonna refresh the trans basically i did it with the synchro uh with the synchros and the bearings and everything last year car looks good i have the trans out let's get it powdered let's get the case powder coated i'll get a new oil gutter a new i have a whole bunch of seals i have new seals i actually have brand new i bought these man year a uh, year ago bolts because when i took the bolts out the first time when we did uh the rebuild the first time the bolts just looked ugly and I didn't like them so I bought uh, fresh OEM bolts but um, you don't really need OEM bolts the more that you know, I learn you can actually get away with there's a lot of aftermarket companies now coming out with trans hardware kits so you could get like a uh, downstar you could do uh, speed factor I actually would have liked it to got that one speed factory titanium trans bolts um, those look pretty cool so that you got some options now but it's all going to be fresh. I can throw in, uh, I also have uh, new detent bolts and uh, and the washers just to make that look nicer. But I'm going to switch to the hybrid racing detent springs. Originally, I was running the Speed Factory ones. I like them. I mean, they worked great, but there's a lot of people that are like really talking highly of the hybrid racing ones. So I'm going to give them a try. Why not? And I just went out and I bought a new uh, reverse switch just because that one looks crusty. So we don't like that. Also going to quick strip, I'm going to take the uh, the shift selector apart so he can powder coat the uh, counterweight right here. That'll look nice. I'll repaint this section so that'll look nicer. I bought a cover for the solenoid from Downstar to make that look nice. You guys will see everything when we put it back together. So it's going to be a complete refresh on the trans. So while I wait for some people to get back to me to see where I'm going to press these uh, this counter shaft out, if it's even going to happen today, I might have to wait till Monday. It's Saturday. Um, I'm just going to try to be proactive. I'm going to swap over three to six on my main shaft from the broken one to the one I just bought. The one I just bought, I mean, it's definitely seen better days. So. I mean, I might have to buy a third main shaft as a backup, get that one cryo treated and everything like that. But for now, this is just so we can get the car moving in the meantime. I'll show you. Eh, yeah, I'll show you guys. All I did was grab the broken one, put it in a vise because it's useless. Put the new one here and it's really just stacking everything over. Just like in the last video. In the video, I showed you guys how to completely rebuild the K-Series Trans. That's exactly what we're going to do. I'll leave a link again in case you didn't watch it. You can watch it. It's very in-depth, but I'm just going to do the same thing. Pretty much go from three. So, quick rundown. This is first gear. It's first, reverse, second, three, four, five, six. So, I'm going to go from three to six, stack everything off, move it onto the new main shaft, and do not forget your two little washers. So, that will be last. i got to put those. They go underneath here, and then the new main shaft will... Yeah, that, whatever. The new main shaft is assembled. Our second main shaft is all put together. Obviously, we have a second gear now. So that was very simple. Just swap, swap everything over. I took the bolt off of the counter shaft right here. Uh, just so you guys know, when you do go to take this bolt off, which is this guy right here, this is a reverse thread, meaning you have to tighten it for it to come out. So I'm kind of uh, at a standstill right now. Again, like I said, this needs to be pressed out but i can't even do that because i don't have the second gear yet that hasn't shown up uh, actually what did show up in the mail just as i was taking this all apart was the um the solenoid cover for the reverse lockout so it was be it would be for that guy that showed up so that's that was pretty cool actually uh what i'm going to be doing now is just pulling the bearings so pulling this bearing out pulling that bearing out cleaning the case a little bit i want to give it to him you know completely trashed like this because this is not getting sandblasted or anything on the inside he probably i'm assuming he covers this so we just do the outside so i'm gonna clean this up a little bit 
clean that case up a little bit and I'm gonna just start jotting down what I need so I need like a uh, just gonna get a, a new oil gutter um, what else what else there's other stuff that I kind of want to get just to keep so I don't know I'm gonna write all the stuff down and we'll see where we're at for today at least before we switch to another day uh, yeah, I, when I was I was here the other day with my car, put your dick away, and that same thing I came out on that Saturday on my way home, my broke second. <laughs> so, uh, oops, yeah. Alright, so there you guys go. You saw we were able to press everything together. I did show you that little shim. Uh, don't forget that shim. That's got to go between the sixth gear and the bearing, alright? So do not forget that. I want to give a big shout out to the homie Dan, Snacks. They let me in. They let me borrow the press when I needed it. So now we're going to go back home. We're going to get the ring gear off the differential and we'll finish up the uh, kind of the walkthrough on how to put a 4.7 in your uh, trans. Now that the counter shaft is all put together, the only thing left in this 4.7 like final drive swap is actually to change the ring gear from our differential. So we're going to be taking the 4.3 ring gear off of the differential. We're going to be putting the 4.7 ring gear on there. Visually, your ring gears pretty much, they're going to look the same. The only difference is going to be the teeth count. So on a 4.7, you have 81 teeth. That's why I'll usually put a mark and you'll count. So it's 81 teeth on a 4.7 ring gear. There is 79 teeth on a 4.3. I don't remember the the um, the conversion or the formula on how you count these teeth. I think it's you count how many teeth on the ring gear, and then you divide it by the teeth on the counter shot. It's something like that. If I can find the formula, I'll leave it somewhere here on the screen so you guys can see. That's how you determine what final drive you have. So. Once you determine that, all we're going to do is pretty much we're just going to zip these bolts off. Once I zip these off, we're going to just pop the ring gear off, put the new one on. You always, in my opinion, I could be wrong, but this is the way I do things. Whenever you remove ring gear bolts, always use brand new ones. So we have brand new Honda ring gear bolts. Uh, if we could find one with a decent part number on it, I could show you. So these are ring gear bolts, all right? 917 ppp 000 
All right, how many you need? Uh, I'll tell you at the end, but brand new ones. So these are gonna come out, drop it, put the new one on. I use a little bit of red, red Loctite on it. Once you run it down with the gun, torque it to 89 foot-pounds. So before you guys throw your uh, ring gear on here, just make sure you clean both of your mating surfaces here and on the bottom of your differential. Make sure they're nice and flat. Now when you're going to go install a ring gear, there is going to be a little si of a side that has like a beveled edge to it. So you want that to face down. So when, you're, when you have your differential set up, obviously uh, one side is bigger than the other. So you'll have it, the longer side sitting up that bevel edge is going to go down on top of that. So we're just going to slip it on over, line it up with our threaded holes. So it's only going to, it's going to slip on kind of tight, but you're going to want to work it until it slips right in. So, so we got it lined up and you can kind of hear it's, it's not a click, but it, it sits in nice. So once it's down, you can move it around, line it up with all your bolt holes. So there's going to be 10 of these new differential bolts. I'm going to grab a little bit of Loctite, run them all down hand tight or with the gun. And then I'm going to get a vise and you'll see. Now we actually have the differential inside of a vise. We have a microfiber towel in between both of the jaws to hold it in here. Because that's pretty much the best way I found to torque this thing. Uh, I can't really torque it on a table. So I just kind of hold it in here like this. And um, we're going to torque this down to 90 foot pounds. So we got the torque wrench set to that. This was already tightened in a crisscross pattern. So because of the way it is, I'm going to kind of just torque it in a circle. It should be pretty close. It's kind of controversial, but this is how I've done it. Um, if I had another person, it would kind of be torqued that, loosen this. It's constantly spinning everything around. So I'm just going to feel them out because I ran them in pretty good with the gun. Torque them, and that's pretty much done. So this is ready to be put back into the trans case. Four point seven ring gear counter shaft. That's all done now. So we're pretty much ready. If we wanted to just do that, we could reassemble the trans, put it back in, and we're good to go. But we actually, I'm actually rebuilding some more parts of the transmission. So I, I took the whole shifter arm assembly out, and inside of it is a shift selector. There's a little piece in there. You can actually get them from Speed Factory, which are for really heavy duty abuse. Now I was gonna order that one. But I took a look at mine, and mine is really not beat up that bad. It's got slight wear to it. You know, the, the trans has like 140,000 on it, whatever the body has. But the arm is not beat up that bad. So what I did was actually bought a brand new OEM one. Because the OEM one costs like $35. As opposed to the Speed Factory one, it's, it's, it's a way stronger piece. Don't get me wrong, but it's like $250. And mine's only had 140,000 miles. Not only, but it has 140,000 miles of abuse, like hard racing. And it's not that bad i could throw another oem one in there save me a whole bunch of money so it's disassembled right now but you would see these are actually the m tech race springs that i use inside my shift selector because i took it apart so the piece we're coming after is this guy right in here so since there's no rod going through it i can actually take these guys apart and take this guy to pop out and uh it's stuck in there a little bit so this is the piece I'm talking about. The little wear is right there where the ball rides on. Like it's not bad at all. Little wear here on this edge, but it's not bad at all. So that's why here's a part number for a brand new one from Honda. And it's just gonna replace that one. So we're gonna reassemble this, put all this back together, get the new rod. Well, not new rod, but I got some pieces powder coated, put all that together. And then we can probably move on to now getting to our case. All right, so the shift selector is all put back together. We got the new uh, little shift selector. Well, the whole shifter mechanism is assembled. The shifter, the shift selector is brand new. That's put in there. Uh, this was sent out to Quick Strip along with some other stuff to powder coat. So I just had him powder coat the counterweight. I sprayed the whole shifter assembly myself with just some high heat uh, silver to match everything. And we're pretty much done with this section, there's only one more piece left and uh, it's gonna be right here. So I didn't really pay too much attention when I was painting uh, to this area right here, when I was painting the whole assembly because 
I got, I think I showed you guys this already, but I got the Downstar cover. So because there's paint on here, I already felt it. It's going to be a lot tighter to squeeze on there. So I'm going to have to press it down there pretty good. But without the paint, it, it fit on pretty snug. But you could have put like a little dab of RTV on the back or on the inside. So that way uh, it wouldn't uh, come off. But with the paint, I think this is going to hold just, just fine. Press that on there and this is done right here. All right, there we go. So as a note to you guys, uh, if you're going to get one of these and you want to like refresh your whole shifter assembly like I did, do not paint that solenoid. <laughs> I had to usually literally use a mallet, a rubber mallet to tap it on there. But this is uh, this is how the top of our shifter, or our top of our shifter, the top of our trans is going to look like. It looks so fresh. So I'm happy with that. And now I think we're pretty much ready to grab the case and throw all this stuff in there. Here is one half of the transmission casing. As you can see, Mike never disappoints. Mike from Quick Strip in Carter, New Jersey, always takes care of me. Everything he does is flawless. So this is, uh, I believe he said this was like a Porsche silver color with a satin clear over it to try to give us the clo as close to like an, an original aluminum color. Um, all of this is masked off, but I always, highly suggest that if you're going to do something like this and there's a lot of moving parts inside of whatever casing you're getting powder coated once you get it back brake clean and a lot of compressed air just to make sure you get every little fine grit of sand out because this is sandblasted when you have one before he powder coats it. he has to sandblast everything but along with this he actually went let me see if i could try to show you guys with one hand he went as far to even powder coat the inside of the transmission housing so all of this is fresh. We're going to re-loop all of that, make sure that's all good. But um, he never disappoints. He always hooks me up. So what we're going to need to do is put new axle seals in it there. Let's put a new axle seal. We're going to uh, put our bearings in and everything and just start reassembling everything fresh. The first seal we're going to install is going to be the passenger side axle seal. So here's our part number for the passenger side axle seal. All right, that's just going to tap into place. But before I actually tap it in there. I'm just going to grab some transmission fluid, lube the side of it a little bit so it slides in easier, tap it down, done. All right, so we're going to start throwing bearings in. So this is where, you know, keeping baggies keeps everything so organized for you guys. So before we start throwing bearings in, I'm going to start with this. This is where your counter shaft is going to go. Your counter shaft, before the counter shaft bearing goes, you got to grab your oil gutter right here. So now that goes down there. Now we would put the bearing in and then the uh, lock plate with the two bolts. But I lied to you guys, I said before that we were done pretty much with our 4.7 swap with the with the ring gear and then the counter shaft. There's actually one more piece you need to install, which is gonna be the 4.7 uh, counter shaft bearing. You need a new bearing. So this is our part number for that new bearing, all right? So this is going to allow the counter shaft to slide into the trans nicely because if you use the 4.3, bearing the new 4.7 counter shaft actually won't slide into the bearing the bearing is too big so this one's smaller so this is what i mean this uh, section right here the counter shaft needs to fit snug inside of our bearing so with the new one it does i wish i still had the old one i would have showed you guys um but just believe me this is the new one you need to run so again i'm going to put a little bit of oil on this this is going to go we're going to press that right in, or just tap it right in put our lock then we can put this bearing on for our main shaft. I kept it on the main shaft here so I would know. Same thing, tap that on right there. And then we can drop our final drive in. Well, not, not our final drive, I'm sorry, our LSD. I almost forgot to tell you guys, before you install your main shaft bearing in, you need to install, pretty. they call it an input shaft, but I've always called it a main shaft. Uh, the seal for the main shaft. So this goes before the bearing. And uh, this will just go right in that little groove right there. The way it goes in, it doesn't go like this. Like it would normally go, it's actually going to go in upside down. So you're just going to put a little bit of uh, more trans fluid on there, tap it down, then tap your bearing on, and then you're good. All right, so I kind of skipped ahead and pretty much, I didn't put the whole trans together, but I got the gear sets in. I got the final drive in. And I got little things here and there, the reverse lockout. I got all that put into the trans. You've seen me do that already. And if you haven't, I will definitely, I'll leave a link again to the K-Series video or the K-Series rebuild video when I rebuilt this trans, top to bottom, new synchros, bearings, and everything, and show you how to put it back together. So you can check that out if you're curious. But I'm pretty much done. I ran out. Of, I don't have any Honda Bond. Honda Bond. 
I thought I had some. I don't have any. I'm at that point where I need to like put some Honda Bond on the cage so I can close everything up. But I'm out of it. I'm gonna have to pick this up whenever I pick up some Honda Bond. I might pick some up tomorrow. We finally got some Honda Bond. Shout out to my boy Jay. He hooked it up. He knew I didn't have any, and uh, he just came by and dropped some off so we could finally close this case. Uh, normally, I would just Honda Bond it, close it up, and I'd show you guys wherever else I'm moving through. But I want to touch upon this subject fairly quickly but i want to give you guys some information because i see this all the time i see this on other people's cars i watch people do it on youtube and it's like it it, it makes me cringe so applying honda bond or any rtv the rule is you don't need a lot and when i say you don't need a lot is i don't you don't need to run almost the whole tube around the whole thing and then when you when you put the two um mating services together all of it like squeezes out most of the time that will give you a leak you don't need to put that much i'm going to show you how much i put and i've never had a leak anytime i've rtv'd oil pans trans cases anything you don't need this much that much rtv that people show you and they just it, it drives me nuts so i want to show you guys the way to do it the way i do it and it never leaks before you get started obviously make sure your mating surface is completely dry you got no rtv or gasket maker left on it and then all you're gonna do is uh, just get your Honda Bond started and I just dap it on. So when I say dap it on, I'm just gonna go like this. So here's what my bead looks like right now. As you can see, I just would squeeze the tube little by little and just keep tapping it on the case. So now we're not going to just throw the other case on top of it. We're going to spread it all around and then we're going to close the case. And that's it. So once you've gone all the way around, what you're looking for is to make sure you don't see any more of the trans case underneath the RTV. Like you just want to see RTV coated all around, but it's not, it's not too much. I, I don't know how to really explain it to you guys. You don't want to just build it up. You just want a nice, thin, even coat all the way around. And then we can put the case on it now. If you find areas that you see, you can still see the case. You could add a little bit more, but um, that's all you need. So now we're going to close this case and that's it. Well, we're going to put a little bit more trans fluid on the gears, on the top of the forks and everything like that because the cases did get powder coated. So everything is a little dry on the, uh, on, the new case, on the second case right there. So make sure everything is lubricated, a little lube on the top of the bearings and close it. And then we're done. Well, then we're done with this part. But actually, before I forget to tell you, do not put the case right on away. Well, unless you remember, but don't forget, you got to put your oil gutter on, okay? I'll give you a part number. I got into a habit of just buying a new one every time. I think they're like 12 to $15. They're super cheap. There's your part number for your new oil gutter. Put this on and then you can close the case, all right? So this just falls right into the top half of the trans case if you guys have never done it. Uh, again, I'm, I, you know, I've said this a few times already, a uh, full walkthrough on how to rebuild your K-Series Trans. Link in the description and I'll leave a card somewhere up top. This is just showing you how to put the final drive in it, but if you want a full walkthrough, go check that video out. So once you get your case pretty much ready to close, don't forget you got to come up top. You got to spread your snap ring open so that way you can get it to go the rest of the way. So now that's open. We'll give it a couple more taps to go down. So my case is pretty much closed. What I'm going to do at this point is grab a rubber mallet, hold in the snap ring open, give it a couple more taps just to Try to get it seated as close as possible. So I'm almost there. Now I'm going to grab like four or five bolts. Just put them scattered around to close the case a little tighter. And then we're, I'm going to show you uh, how much more we need to close, uh, how much more the case needs to come down in order for the snap ring to engage. I want to touch upon the RTV laying or the RTV application because this is a perfect example of what you want to see if you laid your RTV down right. So with the few bolts putting the case together, you can actually see 
the RCV squeeze coming out between the two cases and that is the perfect amount that you want to see because as you can see it's obviously not so much to where it's just squished all the RTV out. It's only a small amount of uh, bead coming out of it but that also tells me that the RTV squeezed properly. We had the right amount and as you can see it goes around the whole case. If you see just that much squeeze of RTV coming out of any oil pan, trans gas, uh, trans uh, cases, anything that you got to seal, I can guarantee you, you did it right because this thing is, it's sealed. I, I guarantee it's not going to leak. So now what we need to do, as you can see, the top of the snap ring or the snap ring on the top, it's not fully engaged inside our bearing. It needs to go inside that little groove of the bearing. So what I'm going to do, because we have the four or five bolts holding the case together, I'm going to flip the trans upside down. And when I flip it upside down, I'm going to bang this. It's a, it's a light bang. When I say bang, I'm talking like I just touched the ground. So I'm going to touch it on the, uh, on the carpet so that way it's soft. And it might even happen when we just flip the trans upside down. The, uh, the, the shafts might actually just slip up slightly and engage that snap ring. You're listening for a click. Once you hear the snap ring click, it's in, then we could put the plug on it. So I actually just heard this, I think I heard the whole main shaft go, but once we have it upside down, it's just a light I don't know if you heard it, but I just kind of heard it. So let's see if we got it. Yep, so the snap ring already engaged. So as you can see, it closed up. If it'll focus, it closed up. Now we can put a plug on this. So with a build that I'm going this fresh or a rebuild that I'm going pretty much this in depth. I mean, look, you can finally see the two powder coated cases together. Uh, let's see if the light will give you a better look. Like this, it looks so good. Super fresh. Um, so I had to get a new plug. I wasn't gonna run the dirty one. Here's your part number for your new plug right up top. There you go. And what I do for this plug, I used to uh, Honda bond it. It actually was pretty hard to take out the last time. Well, actually this time you guys pretty much saw that. So what I'm doing is just putting a light dab of uh, some thread sealant on it. I like to put some sealant. Some people just put it in dry, but a little bit of thread sealant, that'll keep make sure everything's good. Tighten that up. Uh, honestly, I don't even torque this one. I just run that down by hand or with my impact gun. And then uh, also I replaced, or not replaced, I installed the new uh, seal, the actual seal for this side of the case. So that part number is this one right here. So if you guys want to replace uh, this portion of the axle seal. So I'm going to run this down. I'm going to show you the new bolts that I'm using. Because obviously, again, same thing. Brand new bolts. All right, part numbers for brand new bolts. So there's two different types of bolts on your trans case. And you can kind of see them right here, right? So as you can see, this is one length bolt. This is another length. So these are way longer. You're only going to need two of these really long ones. So the really long ones... The part number is this guy right here. So you only need two of these. Then for the rest of the bolts, you need 15 of these. And these are the regular ones that go all the way around the case. So that's what we're going to do. I have all of them right here. Brand new OEM bolts all around. I would have liked to got, I think I mentioned this. I would have liked to got in the Speed Factory titanium ones, but these look just as good. So now we're going to run these down, tighten that up. And then we're going to start moving on to this side of the trans, so we're gonna be putting our detent springs back in, our reverse switch, then our shift selector. Up next, we're doing the detent springs, and you know I had to come correct with those, all right? I'm not reusing nothing old on this trans. I'm trying to get everything new, if I can get it. So we got brand new detent bolts. If you're looking for part numbers, if you wanna switch yours, here's the part number for that. You gotta get three of those. We got brand new crush washers, and again, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this, but I'm so lost in the days right now, what I've said. I'm switching to hybrid racing detent springs. Everybody's swearing by these right now. So I want to try them. If everybody's saying they're that good, I want to try them. I originally had the Speed Factory detent springs in here. And they were great. I liked them. But uh, everybody's going to the hybrid racing ones. So we're going to try those out. So let's throw all this in here. And obviously, we're reusing the original detent balls. There's no need to replace those. So, so this is interesting to show you guys. Uh, just judging by the spring height from the hybrid racing, obviously, on the, on the right. 
to the speed factory on the left you can see uh, brand brand new versus used I'm not sure if the speed factory ones actually wore out over time which you know brought the spring tension lower but the hybrid racing ones are taller so that I'm seeing I'm assuming that's why people are liking the hybrid racing ones and they feel a lot more stiffer is because it looks like this has a lot more spring tension and the spring is taller so it's pretty much pressing your detent ball as hard as it can against your shift fork and that's what's making it feel like it's, it works a lot better so that's curious to look at in case you guys if anybody has a brand new speed factory detent springs um i would suggest going to hybrid racing and before you install them measure both of them the brand new heights to see if uh speed factories is this height or mine just uh, lost a little bit of tension from being used for I think I used these for like two years if you haven't given this video a like stop what you're doing hit the like button right now I just went ahead and put the rest of the stuff on this trans and it looks so good I'm telling you like it is fresh here's our trans all put back together everything new it's either new powder coated or refreshed uh, other than this please stop looking at that but uh, yeah man everything is all back together it just looks so fresh. I can't wait to put this back into the car. The only thing that I completely forgot about and is driving me nuts is uh, this bolt right here, which locks for our uh, shift selector. When you put the shift selector in, you have to lock it in with this bolt. I didn't get a brand new one. So if you guys, I mean, I might look to see, I'm sure I could find this one. If you have a part number right now, put the part number in for this bolt and these studs. But other than that, uh, the trans is done. It's, it's ready to go back into the car. And uh, I mean, I love it. I love this trans. It looks so good. And it's going to stay like this since everything is powder coated. So I'm happy with that. I, uh, I got some uh, gray scotch Bright, And I just scuffed up the K2 and shifter bracket a little bit just to give it a little more polish again. Uh, the Downstar solenoid cover. That looks great. OEM bolts. They look great all around it. The Downstar Allen bolts here. Downstar Allen bolts for the shift selector unit. And uh, yeah, and then the OEM detent bolts, those are all fresh money. This is money right now. For the studs and that shift selector bolt on, in the front of the case, I could do that while that's in the car. So I'm gonna clean up and we're gonna put this right back into the car. And if it's not too cold, we'll take it out for a drive because it's December. It's freezing and I got no heat. So hopefully it's one of the 40 or 50 degree days. All right, so it's the next morning. I took the time after that last clip. I just put the whole car together. You don't gotta see all that. Uh, we're going to take it out for the first drive. One thing I want to mention though, uh, the trans or the, the shift selector and everything, it feels very sticky. And I'm assuming that's because of uh, everything is dry inside right now. The fluid hasn't had a chance to really circulate through all the gears and everything. I've just been playing with it while the car has been running. So putting it through gears and uh, just working it through everything. And it starts to loosen up a little bit. So I just think the fluid needs to get around everywhere. I don't have my GoPro. Uh, something's going on with it, so I'm going to do my best to try to hold the camera as I take you guys. I'm going to take it very easy. I don't want to give it any heavy rips, uh, just to make sure everything is okay first. We need some gas. I'm going to get some gas, and then I'll pick the camera up whenever I got a straight road, and I'll give you my impressions. like the best I could give you guys that that quick clip was just a three to fourth gear pull um, I, I pretty much laid on it at that point I was after about half hour of driving I felt comfortable in my own rebuilding skills with this and I said alright everything feels good and when it's every gear let me give it a quick pull so it was third to fourth so now my impressions I mean the car feels great the thing is I haven't driven the car in like two months so it could just be me that I don't remember how the car actually drove but on like tip-in acceleration, it, it's moving. Like it's picking up speed quick. So it may be the 4.7 final drive or it might just be I haven't driven the car in a while and I forgot that this is how it pulled. Overall though, it's, it's, it's pulling really strong. The second gear, I mean, I, I didn't, I got on first lightly. Like I didn't just rip it first gear like how I usually do to spin the tires. It almost feels a little more contained with the 4.7 final drive. Um, it's almost like it's not as violent so i don't know it could just be me not driving it as hard as i usually do i'm still trying to baby it break it in i might change the fluid one more time but that's for another video all right so this is the uh installation of the 4.7 final drive a brand new second gear 
Car drives good. Hopefully I can get some GoPro footage so I can actually like rip the car. I don't have to hold the camera. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you hit like, the, you like the video. You subscribe to the channel because I'm trying to give you guys all this information. I don't think there's any videos on how to install a 4.7. So please just like the video for that info. And um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. You know, I got more parts. I have more parts to say that every video. I got more parts to throw into this video. So subscribe if you're new. Like the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Stay motivated and keep making those streets louder.